Hello Booktube, this is Weekly Reads. I've had a pretty eventful reading week. Um, there are a lot of books to talk about, um, so let's get going. So I started this past reading week of uh, finishing off um, Persians, The Age of the Great Kings by Lloyd Llewellyn Jones. This is a history of the Achaemenid Persian Empire uh, and primarily it focuses on the ruling dynasty. The book is divided into three parts. Uh, part one is about the rise of the Persian Empire uh, to the reign of Darius the Great. Part two um, takes a step back from the narrative history of parts one and three and focuses on various sociological, political, cultural, religious aspects of the Persian Empire and of the Persians. And then Part three resumes the story with the death of Darius and pretty much goes through to the death of Darius III at, um, during Alexander the Great's conquest of the Persian Empire. I didn't like the book much. Um, I thought while the book uses more sources than just the Greek and Roman sources, but with the third part, that kind of dies out. And for an extended number of chapters, it's basically the Perry Satis show. She was the chief, um, or at least most influential, wife of Darius II and was mother to Artaxerxes II. And she pretty much was the most dominating uh figure in both reigns and it's just it was a little too much and I didn't that I thought was it just it went from a like a, I mean I had other issues with the book um but it just it took it to a sort of a more lurid soap opera esque narrative and I'm thinking the whole time well, there had to have been other things going on besides this. Um, so there was that. I also thought the um, interlude in part two uh, kind of wrecked the book, that it never quite recovered from. And again, like I said last week, those sorts of chapters, while to a degree necessary, uh, just they never really work. Um... So there was that, um, and he also had, uh, Llewellyn Jones also had the habit of um, being a little too engaged in defending the Persian and the Achaemenids when I, it's kind of indefensible. I mean, the Persians were brutal imperialists. Um, who deported whole populations to act as slave labor in Persia itself. Um, they visited horrific tortures and deaths on their enemies, whether real or perceived. So, yeah. So, I didn't particularly care for this book all that much, sadly. Um, I did review it for Opalender's review, but I don't know if um, that review has run yet. If it, I'll check um, while I'm uploading this and it has, I'll uh, leave a link to it like I did for 1,000 years of manga. So anyway, so after I finished Persians, I decided to uh, reread Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. This is the first book in the Dark Store trilogy. It's a Rashomon style fantasy in which a protagonist in each book narrates from their perspective the events of um, an adventure. Basically, a young boy has been kidnapped by a monster. Um, a friend of the boy's family hires a group of mercenaries to find the boy. They eventually do, and they take him to safety after they discover that the boy is more than he seems. 
unfortunately, the boy is more than he seems. And he suffered the equivalent of Stockholm Syndrome. So eventually he leaves the sanctuary and joins up with the brother of the monster who kidnapped him. And they go seeking revenge on the people who rescued him from the first monster. Which then leads to the survivors of that attack coming after the boy while other members of the band who rescued him the first time are still trying to protect him. Basically, that's the story. So, Black Leopard Red Wolf is told from the point of view of Tracker. He is a man who has the ability to find um, missing people. And so he acts as a mercenary and he's one of the people hired to find this boy. Um, other members of this group include Tracker's ex-boyfriend, Leopard, uh, Leopard's current boyfriend, um, Sogolon, a witch, who's the main the narrator of um, the second book in the series, uh, Moon Witch, Spider King, uh, mercenary from a distant land who eventually becomes Tracker's boyfriend and several other characters. Um, while the plot is essentially sword and sorcery and the narrative technique is difficult. It's told in the first person. It's told in a very sort of combative um, storytelling style. Um, Trekker is being interrogated and he's not being cooperative. So there's a lot of like back back and forth, um, flashbacks, flash forwards. It's all rather complicated and as I was reading the novel, or rereading it, I'm like, I really didn't want to read this. And it took me about 30, 40 pages before I realized that. And I'm like, so I bailed. Maybe I'll come back to it. Maybe I'll just read Moonwitch Spider King and see if that one works a bit better on me. We'll see. So then on... Tuesday, no, Sunday. Sunday comes after Saturday. Anyway, <laughs> so on Sunday, I started um, Unsettled Land, um, From Revolution to Republic, The Struggle for Texas by Sam W. Haynes. This is a history of Texas from, uh, from its colonization by... Um, basically Americans, as well as others, but primarily Americans, through the revolution to the nine years or so of the Texas Republic to annexation. <clears throat> and I was a bit, uh, there was some trepidation in coming into this book. Um, like I mentioned earlier today, um, I haven't really been getting on well with history this past month. Um, none of the history that I've read has really pleased me. And looking back through uh, the rest of the year so far, um, I haven't really had that magical, that really invigorating and enjoyable history reading experience that I've had in 2020 and 2021. This year has been a really rough year for me in history, and the first few chapters of this book really highlighted that. I didn't get into it. I thought the style was rather dull, and yeah, so I decided to go ahead and bail on this one, too. I might come back to it later. Um, I was thinking of pitching this as a, another review for Open Letters, but yeah, way things turned out, probably not going to happen. I'll put this over. So then on Monday, I started a reread of The Collected Poems of Philip Larkin, uh, and I read it over Monday and Tuesday, and while 
I think my opinion of Philip Larkin has improved. Uh, my first reading of this collection was not the most positive, but this rereading, he's risen in my estimation some. I do think he's an uneven poet. Some of his, his work is really well done, uh, and some of it is really seems rushed, I think. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it and um, even managed to read a, quite a chunk of it on Monday when I had to watch The Four Children of the Apocalypse and also partially celebrate Death's birthday. So that was a feat. So finishing the collected poems of Philip Larkin on Tuesday gave me uh, Wednesday and Thursday uh, to finish off June. So on Wednesday, I decided to read some manga, namely uh, volumes five and six of The Seven Deadly Sins by Nakaba Suzuki. The Seven Deadly Sins is a shonen manga series about a uh, princess of the kingdom of Leones who is trying to restore her uh, deposed father to his throne. Her father was deposed by a, an order of knights called the Holy Knights, who have um, deposed the rightful king and has um, begun to act tyrannically to their population. Um, Princess Elizabeth um, decides to seek out the Seven Deadly Sins, a, another order of knighthood who, um, 16 years in the past, were accused of assassinating the leader of the Holy Knights and trying to overthrow the country. Given the tyranny of the Holy Knights, Elizabeth justifiably doubts this. Um, Accusation. So she goes in search of the seven deadly sins. She finds the leader Melodius, and together they decide to um, bring the seven back together and try to restore um, the king to his throne and to stop the holy knights' as tyranny. And I've enjoyed reading the series so far. Um, I first started reading the series. Um, to a larger extent in 2020 when I read the first six or seven volumes on Kindle Unlimited and then decided last year when I started to physically collect manga again to start collecting the series and so I'm currently six ways in I'm six uh, volumes in and I'm really enjoying it um these two volumes um feature a of uh, tournament arc, which is a staple of uh, shonen manga, particularly the more fantasy-oriented or battle-oriented. There's usually a tournament somewhere in there. And so this tournament takes place at a small city or small town that's celebrating festival, and the prize is a giant's uh, warhammer or uh, weapon. That belongs to Diane, uh, the giantess, um, who's one of the seven deadly sins. So pretty much all of them enter this tournament. Um, it's a very short tournament. Some of them can go on for volumes, but this one is um, only a few chapters long. And so they all basically fight and you get some really cool um, fight scenes. Oh, this is this one. Let's see if I can get a really good image. Like, no. Where is it? Oh, here we go. So this is a scene of melodious and band fighting, and it was fun. And so after the um, 
fighting is over, um, they're attacked by holy knights. Um, and stuff happens, and it's, it's really fun. I'm really enjoying the series, and I'm looking forward to getting uh, Volume 7, 8, and beyond. Unfortunately, on Thursday, I decided not to read any more manga. I decided to catch up with um, National Geographic. I'm subscribed to the magazine, and I haven't been reading it for a while, and I really need to if I'm subscribed to it, or I really should just cancel it, but anyway. So I decided to read an issue, and unfortunately, the issue didn't really work for me, so... Yeah, I'll give the few more uh, issues that I have, and then I might go ahead and see if I can cancel it if I decide I ultimately do want to cancel my subscription. Anyway, so before I get to what I read today, I'm going to talk about my reading plans for the next uh, few weeks. So I've mentioned before that I wanted to do a personal reading project in the month of July, and that was to read American literature. And so this is my TBR. So for drama, I'm going to read um, a play or two from a famous American plays of the 1960s. Uh, which ones, I don't know yet. Probably... Maybe the Lillian Hellman. Um, I could just try to read the whole of it. It's not that long. But I might just focus on like um, The Autumn Garden by Lillian Hellman, Camino Real by Tennessee Williams, and maybe Zoo Story by Edward Albee. But we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so for fiction, I'll be reading uh, The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, The Burn Palace by Stephen Dobbins, which I've been meaning to get to for a while. It was one of the uh, My American 20 Project, um, Empire Falls by Richard Risa, which I just hauled, and it's one book that I've wanted to read for like 20 years. And then moving on to poetry, I'm planning on rereading the collective poetry of Nikki Giovanni, 1968 to 1998, and uh, poems by Elizabeth Bishop, which would also be a reread. And I'm also, uh, well, I've already read these two, um, and that is a Time and Materials, uh, Poems 1997 to 2005 by Robert Haas which I think the early poems in this collection are a bit rough, but um, the later poems from like the middle on, I thought were really strong. I especially liked um, I think Twin Dolphins I quite liked. A State of the Planet is amazing. I mean, State of the Planet is really, truly amazing. I am your waiter tonight, and my name is Dimitri, is again amazing. Um, so, yeah, this is really, really, that's some really good poems in here. And I also read Sea Change by Jory Graham. Um, I didn't particularly care for this uh, collection all that much. Um... They're, the poems are formatted rather weird, and it just, they didn't flow all that well. So, sea changes was definitely a disappointment. So, that's my reading plan for the next few week or two. Um, anyway, so, my filming plans for next week, which I do want to talk about. I don't know ex exactly how things are going to turn out. Um, like on Monday, it's the 4th, and, um, and I don't know if 
we'll be going over to my brother's to celebrate that as well as uh, my sister-in-law's baby shower. Um, so don't know about that. On Tuesday, my aunts are coming to visit my mom, which will definitely interrupt my usual filming schedule. Wednesday, I don't know if we'll be watching the four children of the apocalypse or not. And then I think Thursday and Friday, I should be okay. Um, so I can film like during my normal time. Although I think what I might do is I might film later in the day. Basically when I film this weekly reads video. Um, rather than, so normally I film at 12.30 central time. And then on Fridays, I film at 6.30 Central Time for weekly reads um, because my reading for Friday is usually over by then. So, so I might do some later filming uh, earlier in the week if I can't film during my normal uh, schedule. But we'll see how it turns out. I do want to do some tag videos. There have been quite a few interesting tags that have come out this past um, week. I also want to do some discussion videos. Um, I'm kind of trying to talk myself out of one of my electives for my back to school reading project in August, um, but I don't know if I should do a like a study period, which would basically be a like a, whatever I want to, or if I should add a different class. And if that is, then what kind of book I would fit into that, I don't know. But anyway, so that's my reading plans for, or what I've read, and my reading plans for the next few weeks. So anyway, booktube, we're going to sign off for now. So thank you. Have a great afternoon. Have a great evening um, and weekend and 4th of July, if you celebrate the 4th of July. And also, if you're Canadians, hope you had a wonderful uh, Canada Day. So until I see you again next week, thank you and stay safe.